Boswell Media Sports. And welcome in to Kosciuszko Lady Women Softball here from Boswell Media Sports. We are on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi for this 4A state championship ball game between the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets and the North Pike Jaguars. We're going to step aside for a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups. You're listening to the Wendy's pregame show on Breezy 101. I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love, no matter what. Give me a call. 289-4862. For 70 years, Ivy Mechanical has been a leader in mechanical construction and commercial heating, air, and plumbing service. We owe our longevity to our leaders, employees, and our customers. Now, with over 800 employees in 11 locations across the southeast, Ivy Mechanical takes pride that we are headquartered right here in Kosciuszko. And we want to wish the Kosciuszko Lady Whippet softball team all the best at the state championship. Ivy Mechanical, for 70 years, we've been the people you can rely on. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's Breakfast. A tomorrow that says they can, not they can't. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Where can you get good neighbor service? Boswell Media Sports. And we are back here on the Wendy's pregame show. It looks like we're going to have a little bit of an early start for the ball game today, so we're going to have to get on the air a little bit quicker than we thought we would. But, hey, we do have starting lineups for both squads. We'll run down those for you. Those are presented by Angel Albie McDonald State Farm. Pretty similar to what the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets have been putting on the field for the postseason. It'll be uh, 13 senior Kelly Hood playing second base, batting first. Campbell Blaine batting second, playing center field. Mary Kimball Price is the designated player. She bats third. Catherine Claire Schuler batting fourth, playing first. Gracie Williams, she'll bat fifth, play third base. McKinley Dickerson plays shortstop, bat sixth. Alexandra West, she plays left field, bat seventh. Lizzie Kate Jones plays right field. She bats eighth. And Emma Rush catching things up behind the plate. And she bats ninth. Emma Gail Kelly will be in the circle for the Kosciuszko Lady Whippet. So Hood, Blaine, Price, Schuler, Williams, Dickerson, West, Jones, Rush, and Kelly uh, in the circle. Speaking of Kelly, we have uh, another Kelly joining us on the broadcast, former Whippet Gabby Kelly, who the last time she was on this field was winning a state championship. Gabby, thanks for being on with us again. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be back. All right. You're glad to be back with me. You're glad to be back at the state championship. Oh, both. Maybe a little bit of both. Okay. Both. Okay. You joined us for the Corinth game earlier this year, the first game in the postseason. So uh, what's it like for have – you, have you spoken to your sister uh, uh, about playing here in the uh, – state championship well she was here when we came and um i went over and spoke to her a little bit but i didn't want to give her i didn't want to talk to her too much she seemed pretty calm and i just told her to take in the moment and just enjoy it so i think she's I think she's ready all right and we are ready as well as i said they kind of jumped on us a little bit early here and uh, we were told 130 first pitch but they were a little bit early on the uptake here. So stepping in for the Lady Jaguars will be the catcher, Emily Williams. Don't know a lot about this North Pike Jaguar team, but we do have a couple of stats we can give you. And that one's just off the plate for ball one. The first pitch at 124. First pitch presented by Holmes Community College. First innings for Whippet Softball are brought to you by Kosciuszko Auto Parts. That one's called strike on the outside corner. Count leaving up at one ball and one strike. Williams on the season. 
is batting it at 237 from that leadoff spot. She fouls one off over the first base dugout. Lady Whippets in the third base dugout today, and uh, the Lady Jaguars at first base. Tomorrow they will swap, and if there's a game three, there is a coin flip for that home and away on game three. That one runs just outside for a ball, too. We're just underway here. No score. Nice weather and a pretty good crowd has gathered here considering for a 130 first pitch on a Thursday afternoon. There's that change up that Miguel likes to try to get batters with. That time Williams was a, a little bit ahead of it and fouled it off down the third baseline. So, yeah, just underway here if you're now tuning in. We can get started a little bit early. North Pike, if you the name sounds familiar, it's because these two teams played for the 2017 state championship game. That was back at Freedom Ridge Park down in Ridgeland. There's a foul ball back into the netting in front of us. That was on May 10th and May 12th. North Pike won both of those games, 7 to nothing and 5 to nothing. There were a few girls on this team that were on that team as well. And I believe the seniors on this team were they were still on the team then. So they remember that well. Another 2 2 pitch coming. It's hit to Williams at third. She fields it and she'll flip it across to Schuler for the 5 3 put out. One down here early. Boy, Gracie Williams has been it's solid over at third base. And that's, that's even an understatement there saying solid because she's been great at third base. Uh, Kalia Wagner will come to the plate. She's the shortstop for the uh, L Lady Jaguars. And she's got a 361 batting average. We spoke to North Pike Athletic Director Kevin Martin, and he this was one of the key players he talked about. That time, Gracie Williams fields it, throws it across, scooped up by Schuler for another 5-3 put out. That was close. Right on the line there. Williams played it. She could have let it roll foul, but she played it. And a good throw and a good scoop at first by Schuler. Quickly two down in the inning. So that will bring up Meredith Bates, the Jaguar third baseman. She hits it to Dickerson. Slow roller who throws it across in time. Three ground ball outs to lead things off for the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. No runs, no errors, nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. Kosciuszko with... Their first batting opportunity coming up after this. Good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates at State Farm because I'm here. Angel Alvin McDonald, State Farm agent, for the service you deserve at the price you want. Call us at 662-289-3161. I'm here and I'm ready to help on Highway 12. Call us 662-289-3161 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants are subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's breakfast. A tomorrow that says they can, not they can't. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the first inning, the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets will send their top three batters in the order. That'll be Kelly Hood, Kimball Blaine, and Mary Kimball Price. Get you some stats on what those three are doing here in the postseason. It is Kelly Hood coming with a 351 average here in the postseason. She looks at one just off the plate for ball one. No score. The Lady Jaguars went down in order in the top half of the first. That one catches the corner for a strike. Avery Payton is in the circle for the Lady Jaguars. Something you note about her, a lefty. She pitched both games. In Games two and three against Van Cleve when North Pike came back to win that series. 
That one just off the plate for ball two. Now, I, we haven't seen a lefty here in the postseason. Now, I'm not sure if the Lady Whippet saw any lefties in the regular season. But it is a little bit of a different look. Kelly Hood hits one. Past the shortstop, Wagner, for a base hit. And Kelly Hood leads off with a single. Good to see that because Kelly Hood, she didn't hit the ball great in the West Lauderdale series. I mean, still got, you know, got got on base a lot, had double, triple, and everything, but uh, not up to, you know, normally what you expect to get out of Kelly Hood. So good to see her there get one right off the leadoff. And Campbell Blaine comes in. She's the only lefty. So now we get a lefty on lefty matchup. That one catches the outside corner for a strike. Campbell Blaine actually leading the team in batting average here in the postseason. She's batting it at 375. Double-digit singles does Campbell Blaine have. That one's a slow hit. Near's going to take it herself and step on the bag at first. It'll be a three unassisted. It goes down as a sacrifice. Works just like a bunt. And now Mary Kimball Price will step in. She's the designated player today. Imagine we'll see her in the circle tomorrow. 363, the eighth graders batting it here in the postseason. You got a runner down at second base. At the bottom of the first inning, still no score. It's like a change up there that Payton tried to open with. It stayed high in the zone for ball one. First innings for Wolf Salt Softball brought to you by Kosciuszko Auto Parts. That one's hit in a right field, and uh, Reagan's going to come on and make the catch near the foul line, but it'll send Kelly Hood to third base. So Mary Kimball Price moves the runner over, and Catherine Claire Schuler steps up. Schuler, 333. Of course, the last time we heard from. Her, she was hitting two home runs in that game three against West Lauderdale. Schuler at the plate, brought to you by the SIP in Kosciuszko. He's one of their employees. That one is off the plate. They try the snap throw down, and it hit Schuler's bat. So, yeah, Williams tried to pop up and throw it to Bates down at third, but threw it off the bat. So Schuler with the 1-0 count. She sort of has an excuse me swing right there and it comes off the handle and foul over towards the first base dugout. We're here on Breezy 101, breezynews.com and the Breezy 101 app. And if you can find the YouTube live stream, there's no video. We're not allowed to video, but there's a stream there with the scoreboard up and everything. That one's... Outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike to count to Schuler. And now Payton st steps on the rubber, winds and delivers. It's a pop up on the out of play. Thought it might stay in, in the ballpark, but it did not. So, count leaving up two balls and two strikes. It's interesting to see right down the middle in front of us here. There's a sea of maroon and then a sea of, I guess, Carolina blue, if you will. It's the colors for North Pike. 2-2 Two -two pitch coming. It's a changeup outside for ball three. So count goes full to Schuler. Looks like Peyton maybe tried to get Schuler to chase that one. A good at bat here from the senior. Gracie Williams would come to the plate if Schuler could reach base. And she fouls another one off. The count will remain full. We'll get you some pitching stats on Payton when we can find them. That one comes in and hits Schuler on the elbow. Well, she's hit by a pitch. Hit a couple of times here in the postseason, and she will get to take first base. Avery Payton on the season, 11 and 4. 
a 1.53 yard run average. So she doesn't give up very many runs. And Gracie Williams will dig in. She's batting in the five spot. 322 here in the postseason. That one fastball. Out, outer half of the plate for strike one. Uh, Williams not only doing it at third base, uh, doing it at the plate because she started this postseason batting it in the eighth spot and just worked her way up the lineup. She's gone up as far as number four in the lineup. That pitch must have been just a little too outside, not too far from where the previous pitch crossed the plate. We're in the bottom of the first inning here from the University of Southern Mississippi softball complex. And that's a slow roller. It's a good stop by Deer at first plate, first base. She scoops it up and takes it unassisted. There were no runs on one hit, no errors, and two left on base. After one complete, still no score. We're back after this on Boswell Media Sports. Good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates at State Farm because I'm here. Angel Alvin McDonald. From the State classroom Farm. to the athletic playing field. Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities, a first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. To the top of the second inning we go. No score here between Kosciuszko and North Pike. And Gabby Kelly, former Whippet that won a state championship on this field, is joining us on the broadcast. So, uh, Gabby, tell us a little bit, what's it like playing here in state championship and, and everything? Well, um, it's definitely nerve-wracking. You try not to make it, but um, I think the best thing about the group of seniors that I have with me when we played was our big thing was – we always made sure that the attitude was good throughout. We have fun and just take in the moment, and I think that's really what helped us win. So I hope that these seniors have made it clear that that's how they should do this season. All right, due up for the Jaguars, four, five, and six. Alea Crossley, the left fielder. She'll dig in, a right-handed batter. It'll be Emma Gail Kelly opening her up with a fastball, strike one. In the postseason, Emigo Kelly, 33 innings pitched, 11 strikeouts to just five walks, went up 17 runs in that span. Swinging strike two. Crossley just all over the top of that one. The second innings for Whippet Softball are brought to you by the Itala County Co-op. So, Kelly quickly ahead in the count. That one's outside for ball one. I think Miguel may be trying to get Crossley to chase one on a bad pitch there outside. But Crossley showing some good patience at the plate. That's a swinging strike three. And the first strikeout of the ball game, strikeouts brought to you by Itala County Better Farm Bureau. Pitcher, Avery one down in the inning, and Avery Payton steps in. Interesting. She's the pitcher for North Pike. Pitch is left-handed, but she'll bat from the right side. Oh. Yes, you see that sometimes in baseball and softball. But no score on top of the second. First pitch fastball, strike one. Going around the Whippet infield, it will be Williams at third, Dickerson at short, Hood at second, Schuler at first. On the outfield, it's West and left, Blaine in center, and Jones in right. Swinging strike two, it's that off-speed pitch. Boy, past few games, Kelly's really had that changeup working. She's made a couple of people just look silly in that West Lauderdale series trying to swing at it. There, Payton made a better attempt than most. 
just a little off the plate for ball one. Kosciuszko going with the white on the road uniforms. White tops, maroon pants, white Kosciuszko written across the chest and white numerals. That ball's gonna hit and fall in front of Jones in right field. Just a good job of hitting there from Payton. First hit of the ball game for North Pike. I believe we we'll probably have a courtesy runner coming in for Payton since she's the pitcher. Looks like Tristan Tolar will come in. One of four seniors on this ball club for Coach Sonia Wallace. Sonia Wallace in her 26th year of coaching softball. She was the coach when these two teams met last time in 2017. That one's hit into center field, but Campbell Blaine's going to sub to her left and make the catch. A throw back to first is not in time. The first pitch swinging from Sydney Williams. She flies out to center field. Two down in the inning now. Early Spears comes to the plate. She's the center fielder for Coach Wallace in North Pike. First pitch is off the plate for ball one. So Gabby, you played outfield. You played what? Right field? Right field. Was that right? So playing at this field, is it a you know, is it a little bit bigger, I mean, than most fields? Or how do you think when you're out standing out there in right field? Well, looking at it from this angle is I mean it looks big, but out standing out there it really I mean, obviously, it felt bigger because you were at a big college <laughs> state championship game, but you just had to kind of act like you were at your own field, to be honest. It kind of made you feel more comfortable. That pitch from Kelly to Spears was off the plate for ball two. That one stays high in the zone for ball three. First three ball count the, of the ball game for Miguel Kelly. We're in the top of the second inning. We're still scoreless. That's ball four. Didn't look too bad from up here. I'm not sure where that one could have been any better, but nonetheless, ball four. And Natalie Deer, the first baseman for the Lady Jaguars, comes to the plate. Natalie Deer with a 210 batting average on the season. That time Kelly finds the corner for strike one. And athletic director Kevin Martin. We give him a shout out because he brought us or gave us the stats from Game Changer for this North Pike team. First time we've had stats for a visiting team or for our opponent here this postseason. Makes for a lot more smooth flow in the broadcast. There's that change up. It stays out of the zone for ball one. Second inning for Whippet Softball brought to you by the Italian County Co-op. These teams do have a couple of common opponents on the season. I'll tell you more about that here after this. That pitch right down the middle for strike two. Yeah, both of these teams played Northwest Rankin and F Florence. The Lady Jaguars played a three-game series from, against Florence. That was their third-round playoff series. They lost the first game, won the next two. That one's outside. Deer checked her swing, wanted to go around. She held off. Yeah, Kaziesko split with Florence on the season. They lost 8-1 uh, to one in a game at Florence on February 25th and then won a, uh, a shootout, 17-14, to 14, March 5th at the home ballpark. The ball's chopped foul down the line past Gracie Williams at third. And against Northwest Rankin, Kaziesko won that game 9-8 to eight on February 27th. And North Pike lost 12-4 to four just four days before that. So it's a couple of common opponents here for the ball clubs. Transitive property doesn't really work there, but it's good to know that these teams played the same, some of the same competition 
There's a fly ball hit into left field. It's going to drift out foul down by the bullpen. Count will remain at two and two. Long inning here. The Lady Jaguars are putting together after going down in order. One, two, three in the top of the first. That one's hit to Schuler. She gloves it and steps on the bag for out number three. Oh, no runs on one hit, no errors. Two left on base. After one and a half, still no score. We're back after this from Boswell Media Sports. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Itala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. You can bank close to home at Holmes County Bank. With locations in Lexington, Goodman, Baden, West, and now Atala County Bank in Kosciuszko. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the second inning from the University of Southern Mississippi Softball Complex for a state championship. We got game one here right now. Game two will be tomorrow at noon. And if we need a game three, it'll be Saturday at 11 o'clock in the mornings. Six, seven, and eight do up for Kosciuszko. McKinley Dickerson starting things off, and she hits one foul into the first base dugout. Dickerson, 296 batting average in the playoffs. Yeah. Inside the park home run and a, a double. He scored four runs, has McKinley. And she looks at strike two right there. I'll tell you, Payton doesn't have a, a lot of velocity on, the, on her pitches. I, I think Harrison from South Pike probably been the premier, I mean, South Pontotox probably been the premier pitcher that we've seen so far postseason. That one's high for ball one. And then you had Kane from West Lauderdale with uh, not as much velocity, but some, some good movement. So Whippets have seen some good pitching here this uh, playoff run. Now you just have a different look with the lefty in the circle. Dickerson chops that one foul on the third baseline. So, Gabby, what do you remember about the state championship here when you played on this field, so they missed three years ago. Standing in the box and not swinging at a pitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, guess I, I, did, I didn't. Uh, I didn't make that note when we were doing the the broadcast. So. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I just remember um, coming back like it was the big comeback. The big comeback. Yeah. It was surreal. You started that comeback because you were the f first one. Uh, I did. <laughs> on, uh, came up in the bottom of that inning. Yeah. Dickerson fouls another one off. Count remains the same. And she's able to hit that one down the line, just foul. Dickerson waited on the changeup and got out in front of it. And, I mean, it hit just to the left of the bag at third base. That's probably a double if it hits the bag and she can get it down into that corner. So, count were made, one ball and two strikes. We are scoreless as fans continue to file into the ballpark. That one close, but no cigar. The Carolina Blue fans that are here, uh, faithful, they uh, thought it was strike three, but umpire didn't think so. Kind of go even at two and two. That time, Dickerson swings, cannot connect. The first strikeout of the ball game for Payton as Alexandra West steps in. West, I think right around 200 in the playoffs. When I was talking to 
some of the other commentators that are, that are here today for TV broadcasts and North Pike, they asked me about some of the players. I gave them Alexander West is the money ball player. She just finds a way to get on base. She scored nine runs here in the postseason. She just seems to find a way to get on. She's walked three times. She went around on that one, tried to check her swing. She could not on well, strike one. But yeah, for a long time, West was batting in the nine spot, so having Kelly Hood come up behind her probably attributes to those nine runs that she's scored. She's bumped up in the lineup to eighth right here. She hits one, and it goes off the glove of Payton, and she'll leg it out for an infield single. Zob there by West. You know, it hit to the side, and it was off the glove of Payton. And it rolled and split the defense between Deer and Greer at first and second. And West just legging it down the first baseline. She gets on with that infield single. Lizzie K. Jones steps in. One out in the inning. Jones at the plate. It's a fastball outside corner strike one. Jones also batting it around 200 here in the postseason. She's another money ball player, just seems to find a way to get on. She's walked six times in the playoffs. She looks at strike two. They're really working that corner as Peyton. In the rush in the number nine spot up next. O2 delivery. High fastball for ball one. Now, I knew Avery Payton pitched both of those games against uh, Van Cleve, games two and three. Apparently, she got injured in the game one and had to pull her out. And I think she, the commentator for North Pike, said it correctly. She took a ball off of uh, the chin. She had to be taken out of that game, but that time Payton's pitched just off the plate for ball two. She came back against Van Cleve, and they were able to win two games just like Kosciuszko had to do, win two in a row on Saturday. That one's hit to Deer at first. They go to second for one, but there's nobody covering first for the double play. Well, it goes down as a fielder's choice. Now, it was Deer throwing to Wagner, but Greer didn't come back cover first base for the double play attempt. So Wagner was about to throw it. A good job by her just to palm it. Because otherwise she would have thrown it into the dugout. But nobody at first. Emma Rush steps in. Off the plate, ball one. Rush with a 280 batting average this postseason. Gabby, how long has Emma been playing catcher? Um, let me say... It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if she started when she was in seventh or eighth grade. It was one of the two. I want to say eighth. It was eighth grade? Eighth grade. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I, just I know, don't know. I it's just know been she's, so been, long. she's been behind the plate for forever. She hits that one sharply hit. It's going to take out a couple of softball dads down beyond the first baseline. One and one to count. Yeah, it looks like you got a, and maybe, that might be East Central's team down there. Uh, that's what it looks like. Another ball club is sitting down there beyond the dugout. That pitch outside, snap throw down to first, not in time. Jones back. Bottom of the second inning, no score. Both teams putting together long stretches of innings in the second after relatively short innings in the first. Two pitch to rush. She hits it into center field. A little bloop single. We'll go back to the top of the order. Piece of hitting there from Rush. Just a little blooper over the bag at second. Shallow center field. We'll have runners on first and second. And Kelly Hood coming back to the plate. Top of the order for the wicked. Second Hood let off the game with a single. Back in the first, she reached as far as third base before the Whippets were retired in the inning. But she's got runners in 
scoring position. I think we're going to get a courtesy runner. Yeah, we are. Jones is going to come out, and we're going to get Manzo. Anna Grace Manzo. See, that's why we're great having them. <laughs> When I can't find my roster, it's great having someone over here. Yep. And a great bed cell. So, Gabby, you need to come to all the games. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hood looks at a fastball that stays off the plate for ball one. This umpire has a very small strike zone. Yeah, he really does. You know, I haven't been able to get consistent yet and determine what's going to be a call and what's not. Mm-mm. That one off the plate for ball two. And we are so also kind of to the side a little bit, so our, our angle and our viewpoint not not the best here. We're sort of we're on the far end of the press box. That one's a cold strike, and I'm not, I'm not really sure how much different it was than the pitch before it, but two and one the count to Kelly Hood. Hood. Got a couple of home runs in the postseason. And one triple and three doubles. A lot of extra base hits for the Whippet leadoff batter. That one's hit right back up the middle. Chopped to Avery Payton, and she fields it cleanly and throws the first on the put out. So there were no runs on two hits, no errors, and two left on base. After two complete, still no score. We're back in 60 seconds on Boswell Media Sports. Premier Medical Group and Trace Urgent Care remind you that if you have any COVID-19 symptoms, please call first. There are multiple options to see you. Also, talk to your provider about your wellness or Healthy You appointment. This appointment is covered by most insurances, and it will help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. Call for an appointment today. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts, where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? Boswell Media Sports. And we go to the top of the third inning, and there's still no score here between Kosciuszko and North Pike. This is game one of the 4A State Championship ball game. After us, it'll be Neshoba Central versus East Central. And that's not, East, that's not East Central Community College. There's a high school on the coast named East Central. And then in the nightcap or the afternoon game, Hernando versus the local crowd of Oak Grove. So that's what we're here. 4A, 5A, 6A here in Hattiesburg for the state championships. 1A, 2A, and 3A up in Starkville on the campus of Mississippi State. And Miguel Kelly's first pitch to Lane Greer is low for ball one. Third innings for women's softball are presented by Premier Medical Group. Greer is the number nine hitter in the North Pike lineup. That's a changeup that Kelly gets to the outside corner call for strike one. We had an early start for the ball game today. It didn't start at 1.30. They caught us off guard and started about 1.23. So we had to try to get on the air very, very quickly. 1-1 one, one pitch is fouled. Oh, it looked like Greer might have taken that one off of her foot. But Kelly ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes. North Pike is the champs of Region 6. That's down South Mississippi with uh, Mendenhall, Macomb, Lawrence County. There's a pop-up on the infield, and now it's going to drift out back, back, and hit the netting behind home plate. Just be a long strike 
It'll count will be one ball, two strikes. Uh, yep, yeah, Region 6-4A, Lawrence County, who's the team that Kosciuszko beat last time we were here in 2018 for the state championship. And on their road to the playoffs, we'll tell you more about that after this pitch. It's an off-speed pitch that's hit to Williams, who will fire it across to Schuler on the 5-3 put out, one down in the inning. We go back to the top of the order. But North Pike had a first round bye as region champ. You know, you don't have to play that first round or that play-in round. After that, they played Stone, swept Stone County in two games, and then went to three games against Florence and then three games against Van Cleve for South State. So that's what their road to Hattiesburg look like. And if you're not sure where North Pike is, it's on Summit, Mississippi. That's a, like a breaking pitch there from Kelly that must have stayed maybe a little high up for ball one. This South Pike team won the 4A state championship in 2016 and 2017. Pitch on the way from Kelly out of the zone again for ball two. They then went up to 5A in 2017 through 2019. And uh, they actually played for South State Championships uh, both years in 5A. Did not pass that round. But, yeah, very good program that Coach Sonia Wallace has put together down in Summit. Uh, that one's going to be hit to right center field. It'll roll to the wall. Blaine up with it. They're going to send Peyton to third. She's in sliding. Safe. Emily Williams with the. One out single. She just split the defense. A good piece of hitting there from Williams. That's all you could say. And split Jones and Blaine in right center field. And the first base runner to reach third base for North Pike is there in the third inning. One down and Kalia Wagner stepping in. Wagner is the shortstop for North Pike. She is 0 for 1 today, grounded out to third base in the first inning. Another pitch out of the zone from Kelly. So the maroon and white fans here not pleased with that call. 1-0 pitch coming. It's hit into left field, a diving catch by West. And she makes it, but it's going to score the run. But a great play by West in left field, a diving attempt. However, the run will score, and North Pike draws first blood, and they put up the first run in the ball game. So they'll lead it one to nothing. There's some... I'm not sure what the conference is at third base unless they're trying to determine if West actually caught the ball or maybe if Williams left early. Yeah, that's what it was. They were thinking that Williams left early. So they were throwing back and appealing that. So that's what it was. But, yeah, West, West caught the ball, so the out stays good. The two outs in the inning, but sacrifice brings the run home. And Miguel Kelly gets Bates fooled completely with the changeup. Bates way out in front of it. Bates today, 0 for 1. Had a grounder that McKinley Dickerson fielded and retired her to end the first inning. That one's a diving stop by Williams. She'll to pop and throw. And she's got in time. Great play by Williams at third base. 5-3 on the put out. But... Damage was done. The Lady Jaguars get one run on one hit. No errors. And nobody left on base. North Pike leads it one to nothing. We're back after this on Boswell Media Sports. Hi, this is Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles. But thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. Remember, 
Shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611 or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. You bought lumber and you're ready to start digging post holes for that new fence, but not so fast. Do you know where your underground utilities are located? Central Electric Power Association urges you to call 811 for a free marking of underground electric lines and other utilities. Making the call before you dig can prevent a serious or fatal injury, plus it's the law in Mississippi. And please work safely around power lines. Central Electric Power Association, serving you since 1937. This institution is an equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. A sacrifice fly brings in the game's first run in the top of the third inning as North Pike leads it one to nothing. We get set for the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets to come to the plate. It'll be two, three, and four due up in the lineup. That's Campbell Blaine, Mary Kimball Price, and Catherine Claire Schuler. Campbell Blaine. At bat today, presented by the SIP in Kosciuszko. Pitch outside for ball one. Blaine today is 0 for 1. She had a grounder to first base that really pretty much acted like a sacrifice bunt to move Kelly Hood over in the first inning. Payton pitches her way outside there for ball two. This is the first, you know, lefty lefty matchup here that we've seen in the postseason. You know, we haven't seen any lefties. In the circle. So, 2 0 count. And that one's hit right back up the middle. Takes a high hop off the grass, and Blaine's on with a leadoff single. Yeah, good job of hitting there by Blaine. Right there where the grass and the dirt meet, the infield and the outfield meet, it hit it, and it shot straight up in the air. I mean, that was odd. Never seen it do that before. What? Designated player Mary Kimball Price steps in. Price hit a deep fly ball in the first inning. It was caught by right fielder Reagan. That one's hit it in the gap at shortstop. Wagner is going to track it down, but not going to be able to get up and throw. Infield single for Mary Kimball Price. Now, Wagner had to move to her right. Was, she did a good job just to stop it. Is as slow as it was going, they probably would have sent Blaine to third base. But first Catherine Claire Schuler will dig in with runners at first and second. Schuler, on her first about, was hit by a pitch. She shows bunt right there. And, and now they're going to do a little cat and mouse as Campbell Blaine on the base. They throw it to third base, but nobody's there. Pitch was low for ball one. Catherine Claire Schuler at bat today, presented by the SIP. One of their employees. This time she does bunt it down. Payton's going to get it and throw to first. So a good job on the sack bunt there by the senior Schuler. One down in the inning. One four put out. And Gracie Williams steps in. Whippet we'll have runners on second and third. third baseman, Williams. Williams grounded out to first base. And a little, little dribbler that Deer grabbed and Stepped on the bag to end the whippet threat in the first inning. High out of the zone for ball one. Third innings for whippet softball. Brought to you by Premier Medical Group. That's a pop up on the infield. It's going to get out of play and nobody catches it. They split the defense. Did Deer and Williams were both tracking it down in foul territory and they both gave way to the other player and it split them right in front of the first base dugout. Whippets catch a little bit of a break right there. Should have been out number two. But that was very, very catchable by either player. You think that the first baseman, Deer, probably has the, the play there because she's running towards it with a better angle. But either way, Coach Wallace probably not happy about that breakdown in the defense. And there's a quick throw down to, they're going to get Blaine in a rundown, and she slides in safely at third base. So, yeah. Pitch was called a strike, and then Blaine got called halfway down the line, and Williams jumped up and threw it back to third, and then Blaine came down and 
when Bates threw it to Williams, it was a foot race back to the bag, and Blaine got it back in time. Well, runners on second and third, one out in the inning, and Williams wants time at the plate. One ball, two strikes the count to Gracie Williams. High out of the zone for ball two. And Williams snap throw down to Bates and Blaine's back in time. Williams got a pretty good pop-up move there. It's a little bit closer than I imagine most Whippet fans want that play to be at third. But she pops up pretty quickly. 2-2 two -two pitch. It's hit foul over the netting. And it'll land on top of the press box. Pretty good facility down here at Southern Miss when it comes to, you know, the press box and everything. We've got our own little booth over here, but we kind of got here early to make sure we could do that. Perks of the being punctual. Uh, it's a slow little roller to the third, and Bates is going to look the runner back and throw across for the putout. 5-3, that'll bring it. Leave it on the shoulders of McKinley Dickerson. That time, Blaine didn't really have much of a choice because ball was hit probably about two feet from her. So she has to stay on that bag. Otherwise, Bates could just tag her and then throw it to first. So Dickerson steps in, 0 for 1 today. Struck out in the second inning. Off the plate, ball one. Whippets have got the two leadoff runners on with Campbell Blaine and Gary Kimball Price. Zach Bunt sent them to second and third. Dickerson trying to bring them home, and she'll bring one of them home. No, they're going to say she caught the ball. Spears was playing shallow. It looked like she scooped it and trapped it, but they're going to say that she caught it. I thought that that one got down. I think Coach Terry's going to call and maybe appeal that one, but there were no runs on two hits, no errors, and two left on base. After three complete, what, North Pike with a one to nothing lead. Boswell Media Sports. Where can you get good neighbor service and some great insurance rates at State Farm? Hi, I'm Michelle Nicholson, your local State Farm agent. My team and I at 116 North Jackson on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko are your one-stop shop in Itala County and surrounding areas for the service you deserve and the price you want. So stop looking around. My team and I at Michelle Nicholson State Farm are ready to help. Call us 662-289-5537 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Boswell Media Sports. Uh, the call is upheld in center field. They say that Spears did come down with the ball. She did not trap it. And uh, the Lady Whippets are retired in the bottom of the third. So we'll go to the top of the fourth inning with the score. North Pike 1, Kosciuszko 0. And that was... A close play out in center field. The net, right where I'm sitting, kind of blocked my view. And it, it did look to me like it was going to get down. But Spears, they say she got her glove down under it. And, you know, not too much of a protest from the from the Whippet faithful here. So they may be thinking that the right call was made. But, yeah, Spears was just playing, the, playing it perfectly, playing it low, uh, sh shallow. It looked like it was going to fall for a base hit. And Dickerson was going to bring run home and tie the game. But... Nonetheless, we remain at one to nothing, and the four, five, and six hitters come to the plate for North Pike here in the visiting half of the fourth inning. Alea Crossley steps in as we get set for the fourth inning, which is brought to you by Serve Pro. Crossley today was a strikeout victim. Her first at bat, and that time she fouls one off for strike one. Crossley, a 321 hitter. 
on the season. She's only struck out nine times. We'll give her one more. She's at 10 now with that second inning strikeout. That one's hit in a shallow right field, and it's going to get past Jones, who dives for it. Blaine up with it. They're going to throw to third, and she's in there standing. Yeah, Jones tried to dive for that one, couldn't make the catch, and it will be another leadoff triple for the North Pike Lady Jaguars. Payton will step in. Payton today won for one with a single in the second inning. That one's hit to Dickerson. And they're going to get Crossley in a rundown. And they're going to tag her out at third base. A good job there by Dickerson. Hit the fielder's choice. And Rush and Williams over at third base to kind of combine on the out. So that would go, what, 6-2 on the fielder's choice? Yep. So one down in the inning now. Payton at first base and Sidney Williams, the designated player for Coach Sonja Wallace, steps in. Williams today flew out to center field. First pitch from Emigel Kelly is out of the zone outside for ball one. One to nothing. North Pike leading it here in the fourth inning. Swinging strike one. Williams all over the top of that one. Bottom fell out of it. Good pitch there from Kelly. Winds and delivers on the pitch just, just off the plate. More and more fans coming into the ballpark. As I said, it's a really good crowd for 130 on a Thursday. That one bounces to the plate, and good job by Rush to keep it in front of her. And keep the runner at first base. Count goes to three and one to Williams. See if Wallace gives the old hit and run signal. And he did, and it gets past Dickerson at shortstop. It's a line drive, rolls to the fence, and they're going to send Peyton all the way home, and she comes around to score. Oh, a double for Williams. Peyton comes around. Yeah, Dickerson dove for it. It was just a little out of her reach. And after that, it rolled to the wall. So Payton was legging it all the way with some good speed. I'll just go down two to nothing as Jolie Spears, the center fielder, steps to the plate. I'm gonna have a courtesy runner. Looks like Josie Spears will come in to run for Payton. We had Josie Spears running and Jolie Spears at the plate, if I have that correctly. Yeah, that's not confusing at all. Running at second base is number no. two, Josie Spears. Spears today is not registered in a bat. She walked on four straight pitches back in the second inning. What? The Lady Jaguars lead it two to nothing. Top of the fourth. That one's hit into left field, but West falls under it for the out. Two down in the inning now. That'll bring up Natalie Deer. First baseman for North the first baseman. Deer, 0 for 1 in the ball game today. Grounded out to first base to end the second inning. And she looks at strike one. Deer with a 210 batting average. She is the number eight batter in this North Pike lineup. That changeup stays off the plate for ball one. 
cloud cover coming over here at the ballpark. So it's been a pleasant day so far. 1-1 one, one pitch is fouled. Chopped over towards the Whippet dugout. So one ball, two strike count. The Lady Whippets trying to get out of the inning. They've already given up one. There is the changeup. Catches the inside corner for a cold strike three. Strikeouts presented by Farm Bureau, but the Lady Jaguars get another one. One run on two hits. There were no errors and one left on base. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning. North Pike with a two to nothing lead. Electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage, or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem. You need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. People say things change, but in Mississippi, good things don't change. They change everything. Back when a blues musician picked up a guitar and struck a chord with the world, the Citizens Bank was making life better in Mississippi communities. Now we're in every corner of the state, changing banking to be more in yours with accessible lenders, more product choices, and always the latest in digital banking. After over a century, changing to local sounds better and better. Member FDIC. Boswell Media Sports. It'll be the bottom of the fourth inning for Coach Tony Terry and the Whippets as they trail it two to nothing. Past two innings, the Lady Jaguars have been able to push one run across, but the Lady Whippets have seven, eight, nine coming to the plate. Alexandra West digs in. She's one for one today with an infield single. That one's hit to Wagner. She stabs it out of the air and throws across in time for the out. Good play there by Wagner. First pitch swinging from West. One pitch, one down. Now, that one was hit to Wagner's right side. She had to backhand it off a of bad hop, but she played it well. Lizzie K. Jones steps in. Day, she's grounded into a fielder's choice. She looks at strike one there. Now back in the second inning, she grounded to first base. They went to second for one, but nobody was covering first base, so there was no throw on the double play attempt. That's a foul ball, runs in on her hands a little bit, and she fouls it off to the first base side. Yeah, you could hear that one hit off the handle. 0-2 well, oh the count to Jones. Now the sun's going to come peeking back out. Good thing about this 130 first pitch, sun mostly overhead. Nobody's really dealing with it you know, like at some of the fields where you're looking at it while it's going down. And that one is a changeup that the North Pike fans thought was strike three. And... Jones leaned into it a little bit like she wanted to wanted to swing, but she did not. She held off. One ball, two strikes. Which is a count. That one's hit to Wagner, who runs to her right and will throw again for the out. Thought that they might have pulled Deer off the bag, but she got her foot back down. So back to back hits the shortstop. There are two quick outs in the inning. Emma Rush, the whippet catcher, steps in. Today she's got a single. She singled in the second inning. That one high, about eye level for ball one. Two to nothing, North Pike in the lead. In the back half of today's game as we're in the bottom of the fourth. That one right down the middle for strike one. 
we go back to the top of the order after this. If Rush is able to keep the inning going, that is. 1-1 one, one pitch is hit to Wagner. She goes to her knee and throws across. Scooped up at first base. So all three outs retired by Wagner at short. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. After four complete, North Pike two, Kosciuszko nothing. Where can you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates? At State Farm, because I'm here. Angel Alvin McDonald, State Farm agent. For the service you deserve at the price you want. Call us at 662-289-3161. I'm here and I'm ready to help on Highway 12. Call us 662-289-3161. Six one for your surprisingly great rate today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants are subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's breakfast. A tomorrow that says they can, not they can't. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Boswell Media Sports. To the top of the fifth inning, we go. Kosciuszko with... Two runs to make up somehow. They got a hold right here. North Pike coming to the plate with their nine hitter. After and then after that, go to the top of the order. They lead it two to nothing. Fifth innings for Whippet softball, uh, presented by Michelle Nicholson State Farm. Well, Lane Greer to lead things off for North Pike. Lane Greer grounded out to get Gracie Williams at third base. Her only other at bat today. Greer is the North Pike's second baseman. Only four seniors on this North Pike squad. And Miguel Kelly's first offering is not in the zone. I don't know where to tell you if it was outside or, or low because it looked pretty good to me. Uh, that one was a little more outside there. Two balls, no strikes to count. North Pike baseball is still playing in the baseball playoffs, and they're playing right up the road at Summerall. Game one of that series will be this afternoon as Kelly finds his own there for strike one. Uh, Coach M Martin, the athletic director for North Pike, says uh, – a number of the fans are planning on leaving here and going up to Summerall for to support the baseball team. And Kelly taking her time here, getting some signals from her coach. Foul ball back behind home plate. So after getting down 2-0, Kelly's battled back to make the count even at two balls and two strikes. Two to nothing. We're in the visitor's half of the fifth inning. Lane Greer at the plate. She hits a little dribbler to Williams. Plays it to her left and fires across in time. But they say the ball was dropped at first. It looked to me like everything was clean. But they say safe. Well, that's all I can Think of it was there plenty of time. But we'll go back to the top of the order and Emily Williams, who tripled and scored in the third inning. Yeah, she hit one into right field and it rolled all the way to the fence. And Kelly opens her up with that changeup, but, but finds the plate for a strike. No outs, runner on first base. And Williams first at bat, she grounded out to first base. And 
She shows bunt there. Kelly going to play it and throw to Hood at first base in time for the out. One four on the put out. It was a sack bunt. Moves the runner to second base and Kalia Wagner steps in. Oh. Wagner has an RBI in the game. She had a sacrifice fly back in the third. And I told you what she did defensively in the bottom half of the last inning, retiring all three whippet batters on ground balls. First pitch to her is low for ball one. The runner on second base. Meredith Bates on deck for the Jaguars. That one's hit into center field, and it will roll to the fence. Wagner stands at second base with a double as the run comes around to score. And Lady Jaguars take a three to nothing lead, and we'll get a meeting on the mound from the infield. Yeah, good job hitting there from Wagner with her second RBI of the game. Just a good piece of hitting as there's time called. As this is called by the players. The coaches, Coach Tony Terry not out there. Just the entire infield coming in and speaking and maybe uh, trying to slow some momentum, calm things down. Meredith Bates will come to the plate. 0 for 2 today with a couple of ground outs. Bates going to be playing with a couple of whippets in the fall with Emma Gill Kelly and Catherine Claire Schuler as she is signed to play with Holmes Community College. That's have Kelly and Schuler. Well, future teammates squaring off right now. The first pitch of high ball one. Three to nothing. As that one's hit in the right center field, going back is Jones making the catch and tagging and heading to third is Wagner. Well, two down in the inning. And Alea Crossley steps to the plate. Well, Wagner advances to third on the sacrifice fly. And Crossley had a triple her last at bat. Led off the fourth inning with the triple. She was caught in a rundown. She did not score. She swings and fouls that one. Chips it off to the side. Three to nothing. North Pike in the lead. Runner on third base is Wagner. Low in the dirt for ball one. There's a slight breeze blowing in from center field. The center field fence, there's Southern Miss written across it. With two Golden Eagle mascots on either side. Ball is hit to Williams. Thrown across to Schuler for the outs. But the Jags get one run on one hit. There's one error and one left on base. Go to the bottom of the fifth. North Pike leads it three to nothing. We're back after this on Boswell Media Sports. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the order comes to the plate. Whippets have their best opportunity to cut into this lead. Currently, it's North Pike 3, Kosciuszko nothing. Fifth innings for Whippet Softball, presented by Michelle Nicholson State Farm. This is game number one. After this 
After we play today, it'll be Neshoba Central taking on East Central. Later tonight, it is Hernando and Oak Grove. Well, that's 4A, 5A, and 6A being played here on the campus of Southern Miss. The 1A, 2A, and 3A games started last night, and those are being played on the campus of Mississippi State. Oh, Kelly Hood steps in for the Lady Whippets. One for two today with the single, the lead off the ball game. She reached as far as third. Whippets were unable to get her home. Ball bounces in the dirt for ball one. Avery Payton still in the circle for Coach Sonia Wallace. We understand she's the go-to, so probably see her every game this uh, of this series. I said she's a she's a lefty. High fastball called ball two. Kelly Hood, one of four Whippet softball players, are going to be moving on and playing in college softball. We'll tell you who they are after this pitch. That's a called strike. I'm really not sure how much different of it was from the previous pitch. But anyway, Kelly Hood and Emma Rush both signed to play with Northeast Mississippi Community College. And Catherine Claire Schuler and Emma Gail Kelly, we told you last inning, they're going to be headed to Holmes Community College to play. That's a changeup that does barely make it to the plate for the three balls, one strike. A uh, former whippet that I have seen walking around is Josie Meggs. She's walking around here at the ballpark today. She plays at uh, Itawamba Community College. 3-1 pitch is hit into right center field, and uh, Hood is going to stand up at second with a double. A leadoff double for Kelly Hood. I thought that she might try to leg that one out, but Spears did a pretty good job of getting to it and tracking it down. So Campbell Blaine steps in. Campbell Blaine presented by the SIP. Her Red Bats presented by the SIP. She's one of their employees there in Kosciuszko. If you drive by and get you a, a sweet tea or a, a coffee or something like that, Campbell Blaine might be one of one of your servers. Baristas, I guess that's what they call them. But she steps in with the runner at second base. She's one for two today. She swings at that one, comes up empty. Yeah, she singled and reached third base uh, in the uh, her last at bat in the third inning. The first inning, she had a little low, slow grounder to first. It really acted more as a sacrifice button than anything. At the chopper to second base, Greer's going to catch it and Throw in time for the out for three, but it does move Hood over to third base. Well, once again, it effectively works like a punt. That's Mary Kimball Price. Will come to the plate. One for two today. Singled her last at bat. She gets up really, really far in the box, and we know Price isn't afraid to come out first pitch swinging. That time she lays off the high fast ball for ball one as there's a snap throw from Williams down to Bates. But Hood, senior base runner, not going to be caught off guard there. Well, that one's off the plate for ball two. Much to the chagrin of the North Pike Jaguar fans. Nope. Two balls, no strikes to Price. Two oh pitch. It's hit foul. It's chopped over past the third base bag. Nope. Two balls, one strike to count. Of course, you'll remember Mary Kimball Price was the hero in the Game one against South Pontotoc with a walk-off hit to left center field that broke the tie. Sometimes she stays alive with the fouling off that 
changeup way out in front of it, but able to find just a piece of it. Count two balls, two strikes. Let's have a runner on third base. Still no score for the cut for the Whippets. Their opponents have put three on the board. Off the plate for ball three count will be full. A three two to the Whippet eighth grader. Payoff pitch. It's chopped to Bates, who boots it, and the uh, run will score, and Price is on. Probably go down as an E5. It wasn't a routine play. Yeah, they'll score that an error. But the Whippets do get on the board. So E5, and Price brings a run home as Schuler represents a tying run coming to the plate. First delivery to Schuler is called strike. Schuler also presented by the SIP in Kosciuszko. She's a barista for the business there. She hits one in the gap at second, and Wagner throws it to nobody. And... Price is going to end up at third. Wagner did a great job just to get to it. And it'll probably go down as a hit. And then a throwing error that sends Price to third base. As Coach Wallace wants to come talk to her infield. Yeah, uh, I didn't think there was any way she was going to try it at all because it was hit deep in the gap, uh, deep in the hole at short. And she did just good enough to stop it. But she turned around and threw to second, and there was nobody home. So it went into right field, which allowed Price to advance to third. So we would have runners on the corners and one out in the inning. Coach Wallace brings in the entire squad. It's not just the infield. So they meet up just in front of the bag at second base. So reset the game for you. Three to one. North Pike leading it in the bottom of the fifth. But we would have runners on the corners. And only one out. Well, there's the meeting on the mound is completed. You know, we told you Coach Sonia Wallace is 26 years coaching softball. I talked to athletic director Kevin Martin. He says they don't have an accurate account of how many wins or how many games that she's won. But he says it's Thinks it's over 400. Oh, looks like Coach Tony Terry, he's sitting at 363, I believe, if I have my stats correct. As Gracie Williams digs in at the plate. First pitch high, ball one. Williams today 0 for 2. A couple of ground outs on the infield. Runners on the corners. See if they try to move Schuler to second. Uh, ball is foul. Hit over here to our right. Booted by a parent. Did not make the kid catch there. Error on the parent. Count leaving up at one ball and one strike. Well, now Payton toes the rubber. And that one's hit to Payton. And they're going to throw back to third. And they say that they get Price out at third. Now, Coach Terry is going to plead his case. I'm not sure he's going to get much help because the official made the call was right on top of it. But, yeah, Pay Payton throws it back to third. Price wasn't barely off the bag. But two down in the inning now. And McKinley Dickerson coming to the plate. Dickerson robbed of a base hit her last time up. She hit one in the shallow center field that Spears was able to get her glove under. Fastball, she hits it foul. 
There was some contention about whether or not Spears did indeed get her glove under that one. But there wasn't too, you know, too much argument from many of the fans here. So it looked like she probably did make the solid play. 0-1 the count to Dickerson. There's the pitch. It's foul right over here on top of us. Almost hit this <laughs> the glass in front of us. But it's all right. 0-2 the count to Dickerson. North Pike fans getting behind their pitcher. And there's a little slow roller. And Schuler is safe at third. Nobody able to come up with that one. Like Schuler was running all the way. He kind of got in between the, the runner at the shortstop. This is what we call it an infield single. And Alexandra West steps in. Yeah, Schuler was hoofing it all the way there. And... I think Wagner wanted an interference call, but good running by Schuler, she just split the defense right there between Wagner and Bates. West calls time. Whippets have them loaded. Alexandra West at the plate today. She's one for two. She hit a you know, legged out an infield single back in the first inning. First pitch, that pitch high, ball one. And I think that the official scorer gave that an error on Payton. Well, I scored it a hit because it hit off of Payton's glove, but it wasn't a routine play. That one's hit to Wagner. They'll go to third for the lead out, and they'll get it. 6-5 on the put out, but the Whippets will get one run. On three hits, there was one error and three left on base. After five innings, North Pike three, Kosciuszko one. From the classroom. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Itala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. You can bank close to home at Holmes County Bank. With locations in Lexington, Goodman, Vaden, West, and now Atala County Bank in Kosciuszko. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Boswell Media Sports. Sixth inning of play. The North Pike Lady Jaguars lead the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets 3 to 1. Six innings for Whippets softball are brought to you by Central Tire Service. And leading off for North Pike, off for North Pike will be Avery Payton. Today, Payton one for two. She looks at that one off the plate for ball one. Singled in the second and hit it to a fielder's choice back in the fourth. The ball was hit to shortstop, and uh, there was a runner on third base, so Dickerson came home with it, and Emma Rush was able to run down the base runner. Foul ball hit out of play. But yeah, this is game... Number one of the 4A State Championship Series. Game two tomorrow at noon. And game three, if we need it, will be Saturday at 11 a.m. The early game. There's the change up and not getting that call. Just a tight, tight zone. Both pitchers really getting squeezed here by this home plate umpire. Two and one to count. Right. 
That's a fastball, and it's hit into foul territory. No one going to be able to get to it. All three of the whooping right side infielders and outfielders gave chase. So Schuler, and Hood, and Jones, but just a little out of everyone's reach. Count leaving up two balls and two strikes. Yeah, the Lady Hornets have gotten to the ballpark. They are down there beyond that first baseline. Looks like some Neshoba Central Lady Rockets are filing in over here to our left. They'll be the home team in the 5A game right after this. That one's hit into left center field, and it is off the top of the wall. It will roll back, and Blaine will have to come in and get it, but Avery Payton with a leadoff double. That one hit, oh, I'd say probably about two feet, maybe not even that far from the top of the wall in the air. And it shot back towards the infield. Otherwise, it, Peyton might have been able to get to third base. Sydney Williams steps in. She's the designated player. One for two today with a double. Foul ball down the third base line. Sydney Williams is one of the key players we were told to watch. I was able to speak with uh, athletic director for North Pike. And he gave us uh, her name, saying that she's, you know, been pretty good at the plate throughout the season for Coach Sonia Ray. Yeah. An even 300 batter. That one's low for ball one. Three to one. North Pike with the two-run lead. They're in the top of the sixth. Pitch outside for ball two. It was a fastball, stayed in the other batter's box. Sixth innings for Whippet Softball are presented by Central Tire Service. Swinging strike two. He's all over the top of that one was Williams. Yeah, good, good looking pitch from Miguel Kelly. Two balls and two strikes. That's a foul ball. Hit to Williams at third. Nobody out in the inning after a leadoff double from Avery Payton. She's not in the ball game at the moment. They did bring in a courtesy runner, which I believe was Tristan Toller. Two-two pitch coming. Swinging strike three. Gets away from Rush. She's going to have to hurry. And they call her safe at first. That's a horrible call. It goes down as a strikeout. That was a horrible call. Uh, runners on the corners with nobody out, and the center fielder Jolie Spears stepping to the plate. 0 for 1 today. I'd be surprised if we see a bunt here. The Schuler's coming in, looking like they're thinking bunt. Pitch called strike one. Yeah, Schuler's cheating up at first base like they may be thinking bunt here. Oh, oh, one count to Spears. There is a bunt. It doesn't get down. Fouls back behind home plate in the air. Rush couldn't turn around and bring it down. I think it ended up going into the netting anyway. But Kelly quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes to Jolie Spears. Top of the sixth. Well, Kosciuszko trails it by two. That one's hit on the infield and Dickerson makes the catch right along the outfield grass for out number one. Big out there for Miguel Kelly in the Whippet defense. 
We really needed to get one. Now we have Natalie Deer step again. She's 0 for 2. She struck out her last at bat. Close out the fourth inning. That's a slow roller. And Williams takes it, fakes the throw to first, and looks the runner back and leave him loaded. Yeah, good job of base running by uh, Toller over at third base, but Williams took it and faked the throw and tried to get a rundown. Well, they'll be loaded for Lane Greer. Today's 0 for 2. But she did reach on an error. Inside for ball one. And she came around to score in the fifth inning. Swinging strike one. The Whippets would love an easy double play ball, but I bet they wouldn't even go for it. I bet they'd go home if they got one on the infield with the bases loaded. Well, that should be an infield fly. And it's recorded, outs recorded by Schuler. Two down now. Top of the order, Emily Williams. Top of the order for the Lady Jags. Catcher, Emily Williams. One for two today, or one for three on the afternoon. She tripled and scored in the third. Sacrifice bunt in the fifth and ground out in the first. Pitch, first pitch off the plate, ball one. Lady Whippets trying to get out of a jam here. Bases loaded, two outs. And that one's called a ball. I'm really not sure where else the pitch can go. But 2-0 the count. Emily Williams. That one's called a strike. It looked higher and out of the zone than the last pitch. No consistency. Can't can't get a read. Usually, you know, by this point in the game, you can pretty much tell what the umpire is going to give and what he isn't. Not with this one. I'm not going to say bad calls, just not necessarily consistent calls. Same spot. Same spot, and that one's called a ball. A well, three and one count, nowhere to put them if you're the Whippets. Well, bases loaded. Well, Kelly got to locate right here and try not to give North Pike a free one. Well, one is inside for ball four, and that will bring home a run. Now, I'm really not sure, like. Kelly probably think of the same Lady thing that, that we are. It's like, well, where am I supposed to put it? <laughs> because I can't figure out <laughs> the strike zone. But four to one, the bases will remain loaded, and Leah Wagner stepping in. She's a dangerous hitter. That one's low for ball one. Last time Wagner was at the plate, she had a double, drove in a run. She's driven in two runs today. One on that double and one on the sacrifice. Strike called on the outside corner. Count goes to one and one. Kelly will wind and deliver. And that's a breaking pitch that comes back 
Catch the inner half of the plate for strike two. One ball, two strikes. The count to Wagner. One-two pitch. It's hit into right field. Jones coming on. Not going to be able to make the catch. And it will roll to the fence. And I think that's going to clear the bases. It will. That'll be inside the park home run. Everybody comes home to score. So Wagner with an inside the park homer clears to bases. And we have an injured whip it in right field. Well, we will step aside for a break, but four runs come across and eight to one, your score. We'll be back after this on Boswell Media Sports. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities, a first class education, Affordable tuition and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts, where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? You can bank close to home at Holmes County Bank with locations in Lexington, Goodman, Baden, West, and now Atala County Bank in Kosciuszko. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties, Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Boswell Media Sports. Lizzie Kate Jones is the uh, shaking up whippet on the play. She dove for the ball and uh, couldn't come up with it. And she got up and ran to the fence to try to, you know, recover. But she was noticeably limping when she was running. And then when she got to the field uh, out at the warning track, she uh, went down. And now uh, she's being helped off the field by uh, Coach Tony Terry and uh, one of the athletic sports medicine training staff here from the from the ballpark. It looks like Macy Coleman will come in and play right field for uh, Jones. So she's uh, being helped off the field. Uh, but while we have the stoppage in play, we'll reset things for you. The Ball is an inside the park home run that brings clears the bases. So eight to one, that's your score uh, right now. As Jones is uh, going to be tended to over here at the uh, the sports medicine tent down to uh, our left. She does get a uh, you know a round of applause by uh, both fan bases that are here uh, in attendance at the moment. But yeah, it will be Macy Coleman coming in to play right field. Haven't seen Coleman. Uh, much this postseason other than a few times in a pinch hitting uh, capacity and she's getting her first j defensive play in the postseason out at right field and we have Meredith Bates stepping in to play to the plate today she's 0 for 3 Bates Hits one into left field. It's drifting, drifting foul. Well, that one is foul for strike one, a long strike one. A lot of foul ball territory here at the ballpark. And, uh, yeah, lots and lots of foul ball. The only only 
bigger one possibly could be Corinth because Corinth has a lot of foul ball territory that we've seen here this postseason. Change up, stays up and out of the zone for ball one. Top of the sixth inning. North Pike ahead by seven. High outside ball two. A two or one goes to count. Two one pitch. Um, I guess it was a little inside for ball three. Three and one the count. Leah Crossley standing on deck. If she's able to extend the inning as Bates hits one foul past the third base bag. Coach Sonia Wallace had to do a little dip and dive to get out of the way of that one. Count will go full to Meredith Bates. Playoff pitch, hit into left center field. It'll get down into the wall. Bates legging out a double. She's in there standing up. Two out base hit for Meredith Bates. And Alea Crossley steps in. The Lady Jaguar left fielder. The ninth batter to come to the plate in this inning. Pitch low for ball one. A runner on second. Whoop, it's half two down. Just got to find a way to get that final out. There's a change up that it's in the Outside for ball two. Crossley, one for three today. Struck out, tripled, and grounded out. That one's hit in the right field, past Coleman. And run will come around to score. They'll hold Crossley at second. Not much Coleman could do there. Just a good piece of hitting. She ran to her right to try to grab it, but just not there. So that'll be a back-to-back -back doubles. An RBI for Crossley. And the Lady Jaguars have batted around. That will do it for Emma Gale Kelly in the circle. It looks like they're going to bring in Catherine Claire Schuler to pitch some innings. So, while well, Schuler gets a few warm up tosses, we'll take a break. The score is 9 to 1, North Pike in the top of the sixth inning. Premier Medical Group and Trace Urgent Care remind you that if you have any COVID 19 symptoms, please call first. There are multiple options to see you. Also, talk to your provider about your wellness or Healthy You appointment. This appointment is covered by most insurances, and it will help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko and Carthage in Trace Urgent Care. Call for an appointment today. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts, where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? Boswell Media Sports. Catherine Claire Schuler on to pitch for the first time in the postseason. 
And it's nine to one, North Pike leading it. We'll try to get you some stats from Schuler. And Schuler with a 4.69 earned run average, two and one on the season in 10 appearances. She's walked 10, struck out 19. And that's what we have for Schuler. I have not seen her here in the postseason. She'll pitch to someone. Can't quite see the number. Ball gets away from Rush. See, it should be Payton, but that does not look like Payton at the plate. So I'm not sure there's a pinch hitter or what. Pitch low for ball two. Let's see here if I can find out who this might be. High and inside for ball three. There's a number nine, which I do not have on my roster. Okay, so there is a pinch hitter. Just taking it 3-0 to Monica Davis. Okay, we found it. And then we're just going to get runner in a rundown, and they get her out at third. So Schuler comes in, and on the fourth pitch, a rundown at third base. But the Lady Jaguars get six hits on – no, six runs on four hits. There were no errors and two left on base. After five and a half, nine to one, your score will be back after this on Boswell Media Sports. Where can you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates? At State Farm. Hi, I'm Michelle Nicholson, your local State Farm agent. My team and I at 116 North Jackson on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko are your one-stop shop in Itala County and surrounding areas for the service you deserve and the price you want. So stop looking around. My team and I at Michelle Nicholson State Farm are ready to help. Call us 662-289-5537 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Boswell Media Sports. Big inning for the North Pike Lady Jaguars as they push six across, put up a six spot, and take an eight run lead, nine to one here over Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. Do up for the Whippets in the bottom half of the inning. It's scheduled to be Lizzie K. Jones, Emma Rush, and Kelly Hood. Now, it, Lizzie K. Jones was injured and came out with an injury in that last inning, so Macy Coleman will step in and pinch hit. Coleman um, used sparingly in the postseason, one for four, the single, and she was she did reach base on a hit by pitch. But yeah, that was Monica Davis that would pinch hit for in the top half of the inning, that pinch hit for Peyton. So the, one of my rosters did not have a number nine on it, so we had to try to figure that one out. So we taking our time here. I'm not really sure what for. The, the fielders are ready to go. And all the pitchers and or pitcher and catcher have been throwing warm up tosses and then we had uh, Third baseman and first baseman come in. Okay, now we had a somebody couldn't find their glove. I guess that was the, the issue. Well, somebody comes running out of the dugout. Don't lay a crossley. Couldn't couldn't find her glove, so she finds it now, and we're ready to go for the bottom of the sixth inning. Whippers have eight runs to make up somehow. Macy Coleman on to hit. First pitch fastball, strike one. Call it the corner. Sixth innings for Whippets Softball are brought to you by Central Tire Service. Oh, 
That ball's hit sharply, but foul. Into the first base dugout. Yeah, Coleman, 250 here in the postseason. As a pinch hitter in the regular season, she batted over 400. But she's not pinch hitting here. She came on for the injured Lizzie Kate Jones. And that's a cold strike three. It was a change up. Caught the outside corner. Coleman thought about swinging, but did look to me like she checked her swing. So all I can think of is that it was a called strike three. That will be just the second strikeout for Payton. And a rush steps to the plate. Outside ball one. Rush has reached base once today, back in the second inning on a single. Back in the fourth, she was part of that fourth inning where every whippet batter grounded out to Wagner at shortstop. She hits that one hard, but it's foul. First baseline. The photographer had to get out of the way of that one. We'll go back to the top of the order after this with Kelly Hood. So 1-1 one, one the count to Emma Rush. Payton the lefty. There's a little roller on the right side. Greer throws it to Deer. 4-3 on the put out. Two down. Kelly Hood comes to the plate with two outs. Kelly Hood. Two for three today, a single and a double. Opens with that change up. That's called ball one. Uh, Peyton's shown that she's not afraid to open off speed. So that, that lefty, a little bit of a different look for these women batters. They hadn't seen it this postseason. Payton taking her time now. That one's called a strike. Whew. Thought it was a little high and outside. But count evens up. Lady Whippets trailed it by eight. Foul ball. Going to hit over in amongst the maroon and white fans that have gathered. Which is a pretty good, pretty good crowd. I'd say probably 60-40 North Pike, though. It's just a, about an hour drive rather than two and a half from Kosciuszko. A little bit more blue here than maroon, but we know how the Whippet faithful travel. One-two pitch is low and in the dirt. Count evens up. Two balls, two strikes. Campbell Blaine on deck. If Kelly Hood can extend the inning and balls hit over the head of Crossley. And they're going to stop Hood at second base with a two out double. Oh, another double for Kelly Hood. And Campbell Blaine will come to the plate. Campbell Blaine at bats brought to you by the SIP in Kosciuszko coffee shop. Blaine today one for three. Reach base in the third inning in the single. She gets a small piece of that one to foul it off behind home plate. I hope it's could use a run here maybe for just some morale if anything. Nine to one. North Pike in the lead. There's that change up. Blaine shows good patience. It was outside. Uh, out of the box, off to the left anyway. Williams behind the plate uh, must have thought it was okay because she turned around and looked at the home plate umpire. But, well, we did look off the plate to me out of the zone. One, one. 
high and outside for ball two. No balls, one strike to count. Two outs in the inning. Macy Coleman struck out, and then Emma Rush grounded out. Was followed by a Kelly Hood two-out double. Campbell Blaine trying to extend the inning. She fouls it over the third base dugout. Roll and land into the bushes. That'll be the second strike of the at-bat. Lefty-lefty oh. matchup. A couple of Whippet fans encouraging Blaine as that changeup. High outside ball three. Count goes full. Three balls, two strikes, the count. Clap. Clap. And the pitch is high and outside for ball four. Two out walk. As the North Pike fans started the, the slow clap trying to get the strike out, but Payton couldn't find the zone, and Mary Kimball Price digs in. Price has reached base two times in the ball game. She singled in the third, reached an error in the fifth. Low inside ball one. Payton having some trouble locating it here late in the sixth inning. We have runners on first and second with two outs. Here comes Price, the designated player at the plate. High ball two. Two balls, one strike to count. No, two balls, no strikes. Two zero pitch. It's called strike one. Yeah. Price probably taken there just until. Payton's able to find the plate that she had been tr having trouble doing. There's the 2-1 delivery. And he turns on it but hits it foul. Down into the bullpen beyond the third base dugout. And Price in front of that one. It was that changeup. And Price up in the box. Got a guard here. 2-2 two, two count. 2-2 two, two pitch. Another change up that Price turns on and sends foul. Once again, down there by the dugout in the bullpen on the third base side. We run out of softballs. Home plate umpire got to walk over and get a few from the uh, official table there. Long sixth inning going on. The Whippets have gotten two two-out base runners. And there's a 2-2 two -two count to Mary Kimball Price. That one's hit to short. Wagner going to try to go to third, and the ball is dropped. So Whippets will have them loaded for Catherine Claire Schuler. Now Wagner trying to throw to Bates, and I'm not sure if Kelly Hood sliding in maybe broke the concentration. Looked like it was going to be in time. But looks like well, they're going to rule that an error. I guess it'll be an error on the third baseman as Schuler comes in to the plate. Schuler, she was the first base. Now she's the pitcher in the ball game. First pitch to her, strike one. Today she singled. Sack bunted and was hit by a pitch. Catherine Claire Schuler's at bats are presented by the SIP in Kosciuszko. Low outside ball one. So after two quick outs, Whippets have come back and got them loaded for Catherine Claire Schuler. Well, there was the hero in game three against West Lauderdale with the two bombs that she hit. That one's hit past third base, and here comes one home. The throw for the second run, not in time, and 
They're gonna say safe at second base. They threw to the pitcher, Payton, who cut off the throw, and they threw back to Price. Tagging was Greer, but I say Price slid in under the tag. So Schuler with the two out single, pushes across two RBI. And that makes it nine to three. It's Gracie Williams comes to the plate. So a two out rally going for Kosciuszko. Gracie Williams hits one into right field and they're gonna send Price home and they're gonna send Schuler home. Here comes the throw and it's in time. But Whippets do get three runs across. So it goes a single. The Whippets get three runs on two hits. There was one error and none left on base. We'll go to the last inning of play. Kosciuszko trails at 9-2-4. We'll be back after this. Boswell Media Sports. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. People say things change, but in Mississippi, good things don't change. They change everything. Back when a blues musician picked up a guitar and struck a chord with the world, the Citizens Bank was making life better in Mississippi communities. Now we're in every corner of the state, changing banking to be more in yours with accessible lenders, more product choices, and always the latest in digital banking. After over a century, changing to local sounds better and better. Member FDIC. Boswell Media Sports. And it looks like Coach Tony Terry is going to bring in Miguel Kelly back in to pitch here for the final inning of play. So Miguel Kelly coming back in as the Lady Whippage push three across and uh, make it nine to four as we go to the top of the seventh inning having to make a correction to the official scorer here at the ballpark as they only had three. They didn't count the last run. That was Mary Kimball Price. So uh, had as a good steward of the game, I had to go make sure that they had that. My book was right. Got to make sure theirs is right too. Nine to four. Then Miguel Kelly back on to pitch, and she will work against Avery Payton. First pitch is a strike. Payton let off the last inning, and the North Point Lady Jaguars came or batted around, but she did not bat when they came back around. It was Monica Davis that pinch hit. That's a slow one that Kelly fields herself and throws to Schuler for the first out. Yeah. Davis batted for Payton. She didn't even finish her at bat because the Whippets got the runner in a rundown and caught her out. Looks like we'll have another pinch hitter right here. Williams is walking out of the box and handing the bat to someone else. So still can't quite see who it is. The PA has not made an announcement yet. That will be number 10 in my lineup. Number 10 is Tristan Toller. Yeah, Tristan Toller. Today she's only been used as a courtesy runner, pitch runner. The first pitch is a strike from Kelly. Oh, Toller, we'll get you some stats on her if we can find them throughout the season. Chops that one foul down the third baseline. Toller, 214 batting average. 40 plate appearances. Used sparingly by Coach Wallace, apparently. 
But she's pinch hitting for Sydney Williams in the designated player spot. Emma Rush calls for something. I'm not sure. Emma Rush was standing up. The home plate umpire came back and said something to the batter. Now everybody's ready. 0-2 pitch. It's that change up. That time it stays high. Seventh innings for Whippet Softball brought to you by Atala County Bank. 9-4. to four. The Lady Jaguars lead it. Swinging strike. Actually, I guess they're going to say she caught a piece of it. I thought that she missed it, but she must have caught just a little bit of it for the count to remain one ball and two strikes. That one's high. Outside ball, too. So Miguel Kelly... Taken out for the final out of the sixth inning. Brought back in to pitch the seventh inning. 2-2 pitch. And Toller stays alive with the foul ball. Whippets are the home team, so they do get the final at bat of the ball game. So that one's chopped to Williams, and it's foul. Third base side. Oh, Toller with a good at bat here. There's one out in the inning. Yeah, odd choice batting Toller for Williams. Well, Williams did strike out her last at bat, but she advanced on a drop third strike and hit that ball's hit to Hood, who fills it cleanly on a good play and a good throw to get the out. Well, that one. Hood had to move to her right a pretty good bit to get to it. But solid defense there from the senior. Two outs in the inning, and Jolie Spears steps to the plate. 0 for 2 in the ballgame. A couple of pop fly balls. She did reach on a walk in the second. First pitch swinging. It's a half excuse me swing there that goes over the head of Dickerson and rolls into shallow left center field and West up with it on a two out single and Natalie Deer coming to the plate Deer singled and scored in the sixth struck out in the fourth and grounded out in the third Runner's going to try to take second, and she is out, thrown out. Great play there by Rush and the covering Dicker, Dickerson. No runs on one hit, no errors, nobody left. Bottom of the seventh inning, Kosciuszko got to find a way to make up five runs. We'll be back after this with the conclusion of game one on Boswell Media Sports. From the classroom to the athletic playing field. Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the seventh inning, Kosciuszko trails at 9-4 to, to North Pike. Not anything... Uh, too crazy if you're Coach Tony Terry because the last time the Whippets were here in the game one of the state championship series, they trailed it by seven. And if you remember your history, they tied that ball game and went in on to win it in extra innings. Oh, maybe a little history repeating itself. Gabby Kelly and I talked about that earlier in the ball game. There's uh, the former Whippet, the state champ from 2018, joined me on the broadcast. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm sure something like that 
may have been reminded to the team there in the dugout as they get ready to close it out here and try to complete the comeback. They got three runs in the sixth inning. It'll be McKinley Dickerson to lead things off for Kosciuszko. Singled in the fifth innings, our only hit on the afternoon. That's six, seven, and eight due up. And she hits that one in the right field. And it will be cut off, but she'll stand at second with a leadoff double. Yeah, Reagan couldn't quite get to it. They did a good job of stopping it before it rolled to the fence. Otherwise, um, Dickerson might be able to get to third. Alexandra West stepping to the plate. One for five, or one for three on the afternoon. Grounded into the fielder's choice, her last at bat. Singled in the second inning. She calls time as Payton and Williams weren't on the same page when it came to the signals. They were taking their time. Now Payton delivers. It's a pop-up, and Wagner will take it about two steps into the grass at shortstop. One down in the inning. Macy Coleman steps in, her second at bat today. And Coleman struck out back in the sixth inning, her only other plate appearance. It's in playing for the injured Lizzie Kate Jones, who... Came up injured after a diving attempt for a pit a play in right field. As that one is called ball one. Seventh innings for Whippet Softball are presented by Atala County Bank. One oh pitch. Coleman swings but can't connect. That was just a high fastball that Payton was able to push it past her. One one the count. Well, that one's hit into right field, and they're gonna wave Dickerson home. Here comes the throw. She's in safe. They're gonna try to get Coleman at second, and they do. Oh, Dickerson comes around to score. It'll be a RBI single for Coleman, and she's out on the trying to reach second, and Emma Rush steps in. Nine to five. Well, it's cut into the deficit. Well, last time there were two outs. Lady Whippets were able to push across three runs. Right now they need four runs to keep this one going. Rush is one for three. In the ball game this afternoon with a single in the second inning. Pitch high. Ball one. Whippet fans uh, begging and praying that Rush can reach and get back to the top of the order with Kelly Hood. That pitch not very far from where the last one was, but it's called a strike. One ball, one strike to count. Payton taking her time here. And there's that changeup that Rush just can't figure out. Uh, one and two, the count. Whippets down to their final strike. Was the North Pike faithful come to their feet? One, two pitch. Off the plate, ball two. Uh, Payton trying to get Rush to chase that one. Good patience there from Rush. 2-2 oh, two -two pitch. On the way. Uh, foul. Off to the right side. We'll do it all over again. 
as the throwback to the pitcher goes into the cent <laughs> into center field. I was looking down at my sheet. I'm not sure. Well, that happened. I guess maybe just a high throw from Williams back to the mound, but North Pike fans, once again, standing on their feet. And the Another 2-2 two -two pitch on the way to rush. Swinging, strike three, and that will do it. The Lady Jaguars take game one, nine to five, over your Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. We'll take a break, come back for some postseason or postgame wrap up, but we'll come back after this. Your final nine to five, North Pike beats Kosciuszko. Back after these messages. Boswell Media Sports. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love, no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. For 70 years, Ivy Mechanical has been a leader in mechanical construction and commercial heating, air, and plumbing service. We owe our longevity to our leaders, employees, and our customers. Now, with over 800 employees in 11 locations across the Southeast, Ivy Mechanical takes pride that we are headquartered right here in Kosciuszko. And we want to wish the Kosciuszko Lady Whippet softball team all the best at the state championship. Ivy Mechanical, for 70 years, we've been the people you can rely on. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's Breakfast. A tomorrow that says bacon, not bacant. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Me is a F. We didn't even talk about Quench your thirst. Stop by the Cisco would like to wish Catherine Claire Schuler, Campbell Blaine, and all the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets good luck as they play for the state championship. Whether you're heading out to a game, on your morning commute, or just need a little something to quench your thirst, stop by the SIP on Veterans Memorial Drive in Kosciuszko. Try out our great selection of coffee or grab a fresh fruit smoothie or frappe. We also have great food items for breakfast and lunch. The SIP in Kosciuszko. Go Whippets! Boswell Media Sports. Game one is in the books. The Kosciuszko Lady Whippets go down in game one to the North Pike Lady Jaguars 9-5. to five. It was a big, big uh, inning for the Jaguars in the sixth inning where they pushed six runs across that really uh, opened it up and made it to where just a little bit too much for the Whippets to, to come back. And uh, the Kosciuszko uh, Lady Whippets fall here. Let's see, they finished the game with 12 hits and only one error. The big story of the ball game as it has been in the postseason. Runners left on base. It will be nine left on base for the Lady Whippets. Uh, that hurts you a lot here when you're placing teams as good as North Pike. Uh, but that is the wrap up. We're not allowed to stay here very long as we'll get run out by the other radio crew. And uh, we will be back with you tomorrow. Uh, first pitch is at noon. Our airtime will be just before that. So we will come back to you tomorrow for game two and then uh, if we need a game three, it will be on Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning. So that's what it looks like. Keep it uh, right here. We'll be on Breezy 101 tomorrow, breezynews.com. Just the same channel, uh, just a different time. Uh, so we will be back with you. And uh, for game two, hopefully, uh, we'll have a game three. Whippets facing a l elimination tomorrow. They have their backs against the wall, but it's nothing they haven't faced already this postseason. But that will do it for us. We're going to sign off until tomorrow. Kosciuszko 
Falls in game one, nine to five. For Basel Media Sports, this is Brooke Raleigh saying good afternoon and go Whippets.